Hello there. Welcome to yet another wonderful time with me, Bishop Mike Lodge, on Daily Word and Prayers. Today, by the mercies of the Lord, I bless you and decree the Lord bless you. The Lord God Almighty cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and the Lord do you good. The Lord prosper you and bless you in your going out and bless you in your coming in. The Lord bless you in your businesses. The Lord bless the works of your hands. And the Lord cause all that you do to prosper in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace and the blessings of the Lord will abound graciously towards you all through the day and the days that are ahead in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I welcome you yet to the continuation of what we've been looking at over a period right now. We've been taking a very strong look at mind mathics. And along the lines of mind mathics, we've discussed many issues. You can always go back and see our videos in our YouTube channel, Bishop Mike Laji. You can subscribe and you'll get all that you need to see. We've been looking at creative consciousness. Creative consciousness. Yesterday we began looking into very strongly areas along the lines of I am, the Lord of I am, the name of the Lord that is I am. And today we want to talk about the creative consciousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. The creative consciousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. What made Jesus Jesus? What made him to be able to say and to deliver? What made him to be able to do the miracles, the mighty signs and wonders that he wrought in the land? These are the things I want for us to begin to look into. Because they in themselves give us the pattern, <clears throat> the mold by which we ourselves are to exist, to live upon the face of the earth. For Jesus has become unto us our perfect example. For a text today, our Lord for us to look into scriptures in the book of Matthew's gospel, chapter number 16, reading verse number 13 through to verse number 18. But I think we will look at maybe verse 15. Very carefully. But follow me with this. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say? that I, the Son of Man, am. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon answered, and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Mm. The second passage of scripture is found in the book of John's Gospel, chapter number 17, reading verse 20 
through the 23. And Jesus declared, Need I pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through thy word. <clears throat> Excuse me. That they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be part, and made perfect in one. What a word. I'll carry I read these scriptures and come back to them. And then the last passage of scripture is found in Philippians chapter number 2, reading verse 5 through to 7. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. These are very strong words that we have heard from the scriptures. And I like to express the heart of God to us through these texts. In talking about the creative consciousness of our Lord Jesus Christ, we also must realize that if this mind of his creative consciousness was as strong as the scripture indicates, then we ourselves must key in to that mindset, which is that consciousness. That we too might live a life that is like unto the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I talk about creative consciousness, I'm talking about the law of I am. Once identity of himself and who he is. He's being aware. He's being in understanding of his true identity it means the word creative consciousness is that I have come into an awareness of who I am based on my relationship and connection with the almighty God that is also the first I am that based on that I have everything it takes to be able to create that is bring into existence anything and everything I desire and this I can do by the thought patterns I have within me and my imaginations everything that is created upon the face of the earth came from the originality of a thought pattern and imagination. So if I being a product, a child, the begotten of the almighty God that is I am, I also can be termed to be I am. And I have what it takes to create like the almighty God my father had created. Mm. Please hear this. Jesus was Jesus because of his consciousness of who he was. What made Jesus Jesus 
was not the fact that he was given a name called Jesus. <laughs> what made Jesus Savior and also all-powerful was because he understood his divine oneness. He understood his identity in God. Not just his identity with his earthly biological parents, but his identity with the Almighty God from whence he came. What made Jesus Jesus? The great deliverer, the mighty one upon the face of the earth. It was because he had an understanding of his consciousness, of his I amness. He knew who he was. So nobody or no situation could define him and make him be what he was not. And to that extent, I would like you to realize that nothing and nobody or situation should define you. Nothing should put you in a box. Nothing should make you feel inadequate. Nobody should make you feel downtrodden. No situation should make you feel helpless. Because if you realize that you are, I am, like the Lord God Almighty, your father, then you will be in charge of situations and circumstances. I want you to come into an understanding of your I amness in God, your sonship relationship with God. That if there is a humanity, then there must be a divinity that created humanity. And your link with him, your association with him, is what establishes your victory upon the face of the earth. That's why it is said in the scripture that they that do know their God, Daniel said that, they that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. You must come into knowledge. Of who you are in God for you to be strong and then to do exploits. Please hear these few things that the Lord said in scriptures. In the book of 1st John chapter number 4 verse 17 scripture records as he is, Jesus is so are we in this world as he is so are we in this world which means we are not of this world even though we are in this world we get our nature we get our strength we get our understanding from the heavens from the realms of the spirit of God so we must realize and get to know how is how he is that we might know how we are and ought to be how is the Lord Jesus Christ now in the presence of the Almighty God? Is he weak? Is he a failure? Is he sad? If it's none of these things, then you are not permitted to be any of these things. Not permitted. Not permitted. For as he is, so are we. He is victorious, so we are victorious. He is more than a conqueror, so we are more than a conqueror. He is full of health, so we are full of health. He has life in him, so we also have life in us. Wow. It's the understanding that makes the difference. Scripture says in the book of John, chapter number 1, verse 14, that Jesus is the first begotten, is the first, the only begotten of the Father, and in the book of 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse 3, we also have been begotten of the Father. As he was begotten, being the first and only begotten at that time, we now have become begotten of the Father, like he was the begotten of the Father. 
And the scripture says in the book of Romans chapter number 8, verse 29, that he is the firstborn amongst many brethren. Firstborn, which means there are other brethren that came after him. But do take note of this. As he is, so are we upon the face of the earth. Now, so let us find out what was really his creative consciousness. What was the consciousness that Jesus carried everywhere he went? What was the awareness of himself that he had? Please hear this as we go into scriptures. In the book of Matthew chapter number 16, in verse number 13 through to 18, Jesus called his disciples. Knowing who he was, he wanted to find out what people thought about him. If they had a great understanding to his identity, if they had an understanding of his consciousness, of his I amness, of his sonship relationship with the Father. He asked, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do they say I am? I am, I am, I am. Who do they say I am? Like I taught yesterday, whatever you put after I am is what you are. Is it some said that thou art John the Baptist? Some said that thou art Elias. Some said that thou art Jeremiah. Some said you are one of the prophets. He didn't meet up with his identity. They said it, but that was not his identity. So he did not accept it. So I came to say to you today, following the order of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If people say what you are not to you, it is in your place not to accept it. Whatever they have said to your I amness that is not your true identity in God, it is nothing but an opinion of theirs as regards you and your life. But if you do not know who you are and you do not understand and come into consciousness of your identity in God, you will accept and believe whatever their opinions are concerning you. That is why God sent me your way to say to you you are not what men say you are. You are not a failure. You are not finished. You will not end up the way you are. You are not a dons. You are not stupid. You are not poor. You are not wretched. You are the blessed of the Lord. Realize your identity. Come to terms with divine consciousness. Come to terms with the fact that you are from the Lord and that you are a son of God. Look at what the Bible says. Jesus turned and asked them now, his own disciples. And he said, you've been working with me for such a long time. I want to ask, who do you say that I am? They couldn't get it. It took Peter to catch it. And he caught it not from the physical realm. He caught it from the realms of the spirit. And he said, Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus had a smile on his face. I presume 
And he said to Peter, mm, mm, mm. Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. So it takes the Father to reveal who the Son is. The Father revealed to Peter that Jesus was the Christ and he was the Son of the living God. And that Jesus was an I am like God was I am. <laughs> the Godhead was made manifest in Jesus upon the face of the earth. That's why he could do the strange things he did knowing that he was God upon the face of the earth. <laughs> oh Lord. So I speak to you right now. As a child of the kingdom, as one who is saved, born again, having accepted Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior, your true identity cannot be drawn from flesh and blood. Your true identity is from the Father. Jesus knew it from the Father. Peter got it from the Father. You too can get it from the Father as I have gotten it from the Father to realize that I am the Son of the living God. Therefore, the identity of divinity is in my humanity to the intent that every time I say I am, I speak about divinity in my humanity. So therefore, I must be careful to always identify myself positively with God, who is the main I am, and not to use it negatively with the worldly system and the devil, who is not the I am. In John's Gospel, chapter number 17, Jesus began to pray for his disciples and for us who are to believe the words of the disciples. He called upon the Father for our sakes. And he said, Neither pray I for these disciples that are before me now, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. And we have come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ through the words of the disciples, the apostles that wrote the scriptures. It says that they, I, you, and the disciples may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. It therefore means that as Jesus understood his oneness with the Father, so also the disciples came to understand their oneness in the Father. So you and I must come to understand our oneness also with the Father. The word one is an indivisible number. You cannot separate one from one. One is one. You can take away any fraction from one. <laughs> so you can take away Jesus from the Father and the Father from Jesus. Even though Jesus was upon the face of the earth. In the same vein, you can take away the disciples from Jesus and Jesus from the disciples. So also, you can't take me and you from the Father even as the Father cannot be taken away from you. For it is in Him you live. It's in Him you move. It's in Him you have your being. Your entirety is in Him. Paul writes, he said, It is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who died and rose again from me. So it therefore means, if Jesus could come to understand that he was one with the Father, so you must realize that you are one with the Father. It doesn't matter whether you are in the flesh or not. You are one with the Father. Because Jesus, who was our prototype, 
who was the first begotten of the Father, came in flesh so that we too, in flesh, will realize that we can be one with the Father and are also one with the Father. And the last scripture is in Philippians chapter number 2, verse 5 through to 7. And it's mind-boggling. It says, let this mind, this mind, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So which means Jesus had a mindset. Jesus was conscious of a particular thing. And what was it that he was conscious about? What was his mindset? Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Mm. Mm. He was not trying to take anything from God. No. Because he knew he was God in flesh. He was God in flesh. The Bible says no man had seen the Father but the only begotten of the Father that is Jesus revealed the Father to us. That when we see mankind who has his I amness in God, who has an understanding of his position and identity with God, that person upon the face of the earth can stand also as God. In all of this, I make bold to declare you are God upon the face of the earth, over your circumstances over your situations, and over life generally. That is why you must be careful how you use the word I am. I am. I am. Let me show you a few passages of scripture of how Jesus used the word I am. Because we'll be taking it one after the other as the days go by. But I just want to tell you that every time Jesus used the word I am, he never used it in a negative sense. He used it all the time in a positive sense. And he used it in line with his father, the almighty I am himself. Look at what Jesus said in the book of John, chapter number 10, verse 10. He says, I am come that they might have life. Every time he comes, it's for something good to take place. He says, I am from above. I am not of this earth. Positive. In John chapter number 8, verse 23. And he said also in John chapter number 8, verse 12, he said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Hmm. In John chapter number 6, verse 35, he said, I am the bread of life. In John 14, verse 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and I am the life. <laughs> In Revelation chapter number 1, verse 8, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Oh, Lord God Almighty. In John chapter number 10, verse 9, it says, I am the door. In John chapter 10, verse 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. In John chapter 15, verse 5, he said, I am the vine. In the book of John chapter number 11, verse 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And in John chapter number 8, verse 58, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Why did he use all these I am. He used them simply because he understood his I amness with the Father. And he knew his identity was not of this earth, but was of the Father and the heavens of God. And so, by reason of that, he had full control over the earth. For he that is from above is basically above all. And I beg you to realize this one truth. You are from above and you are not from and of this earth. I want you to realize that your I amness is of the Lord. 
never use I am in the negative sense anymore. Jesus never did, so you must never do. Every time people use I am in the negative sense, that negative thing that is added becomes what they see, becomes their reality in life. Because whatever you add to I am is what becomes your reality. It is an error to say these few things that I listed out, which I want to say to us. Because these are the things we say because that's the consciousness of who we are. It's negative and it should not be done. But we find that when man who has no understanding of his I amness, his oneness, his sonship relationship with the father uses the word I am, they use it always very negatively. That's why you hear people say, I am sick. I am poor. I am not okay. I am in problems. I am in trouble. I am naked. I am dying. I am discouraged. I am confused. I am finished. I am broke. I am a nobody. I am cursed. All these negative words are not of God and should not be added to I am. Because anything and everything you add to I am is what you become. And God also on designed the entire system and creation that your thought patterns and your words controls your entire life and brings about your realities in life. That you are going through a challenge should not make you believe that you are the challenge and should not make you equate, equate yourself with the challenge. You might be going through a season where there is no money in your pocket. That does not make you broke. So never say, I am broke. That you are feeling unwell should not make you say, I am sick. Mm -mm. Because I am cannot be sick. Divinity cannot be sick. Divinity cannot be broke. Divinity cannot be discouraged. Divinity cannot be finished. Divinity cannot be cursed. Divinity cannot be confused. Divinity cannot be dying. Never use negative words immediately after the word I am. Because you bring divinity to ridicule every time you put a negative word after I am. Therefore, if you must operate by the grace of the almighty God, who is the I am, that I am, you must realize your identity that is in him. No wonder Paul, understanding that, said, I am what I am, not by my strength or struggles, but by grace I received of him. And that grace is upon your life. And I say this by the strength of the God whom you call upon and I call upon. He will make a way for you as you understand your oneness, your sonship relationship, and your I amness in God. I bless you this day and I decree over your life that if you can think right, you will live right. If you can think well, all will be well with you. That's why it says in scripture, say ye unto the righteous, it shall be well. And as they believe that it shall be well, so it becomes well. Let the weak say, I am strong, not I am weak. Never use a negative word over your life every time you say, I am. Because anytime you say, I am, you bring divinity into humanity 
and divinity is never negative. So, as you hear the sound of my voice, begin to recreate your world. Begin to recreate your status. Begin to recreate your situations by using the word I am positively. In the place of being poor, instead of saying I am poor, begin to say I am rich. Instead of being of saying I am sick, begin to say I am healed, I am well. Instead of saying I am dying, begin to say I am alive. I have life. Instead of saying, I am confused, say, I have direction in life. Once you begin to use I am positively, you create for yourself a new reality. Instead of saying, I am cursed, always say, I am blessed. It will create a new reality for you in life. This is how we walk miracles by virtue of I am. Who God say I am. That's why that song by Sinach was so, so powerful. I know who I am. Do you really know who you are? Not who you are from your biological parents. Not who you are based on circumstances and situations, but who you are in God, your Father, and in Christ, your Savior. Once you can sink, that is link, come into understanding of the understanding of your I amness, your sonship relationship, and your oneness in God, you will never ever be under situations whether you be on top of them and above all you'll be in control of them i bless you this day and i decree that the blessings of the lord over your life will never cease in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ from tomorrow we're looking at the i am's of the lord jesus christ all he said concerning himself and all you must realize that what he said is what you are and what you should declare and what you should experience upon the face of the earth. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord be gracious unto you and do you good in Jesus' name. I never end this broadcast if I do not make for us to declare positive things and affirmations over our lives. So say with me today, I am blessed. I am prosperous. I have direction in life. I am an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. I am rich. I am wealthy. I am the blessed of the Lord. I am encouraged in God. I am alive. I have victory. And I am victorious over every situation that I find myself in. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above only. I am not beneath. I am he that will give and lend. I am not a borrower. I am the greatest in my father's house. As your mouth have declared them, so be they and they be over you in Jesus' mighty name. Today, as I bring this broadcast to a close, I'll always say, every day for you will be a plus and not a minus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do press the like button and also share these words with friends and families. And God will bless you as you do in Jesus' name. And above all, go to our YouTube page and subscribe to Bishop Mike Laju TV. And God will bless you as you do. For you will always receive all our programs and all that we upload. 
God honor you and keep you and make you rapturable in Jesus' mighty name. See you same time tomorrow by 12 on the dot. We'll have the word of the Lord and prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>